Hello everyone, today uh, we're going to talk about resizing our avatars and uh, so I'm working on this cat avatar and the client and I were talking about um, avatar or its size and we I was kind of saying how I think it's a little bit small. Now in the uh, beginning we had, I resized the avatar to exactly what a normal cat would be and I did that all in Blender, but then when we brought it into Second Life, it seemed a bit small. So I didn't get too far into the animation before I started realizing this. And uh, so uh, we could e we easily just resize the avatar. So I'm going to show that today. So let's log out of Second Life here. And now we're in... Blender, of course. Here we are in Blender. And before I get started, um, this topic is very much related to tinies and giants. And um, Gaia has done, Gaia of the Machine Matrix team, has done a video about tinies and giants. So I suggest anybody who wants to work on Tinies or Giants or wants to know more about this resizing of your avatar, um, go watch Gaia's video. I will real quickly, actually I'm going to do this while we're talking. I'm going to put this link in the description of this video. I think I can do it. Yeah, right in real time. I don't know if you guys will see this. But I'm saving the link in there to Gaia's video. So anybody can go and watch that video about um, tinies and giants or resizing your avatar. <coughs> but I'm going to do it on this cat. Okay, so it's a, a pretty simple process. I'm going to get rid of those face bones. And maybe get rid of the hands, just to keep this um, looking simple. So I'm in pose mode. And, um, you know, early on when we started talking about resizing this cat, uh, we said, well, you know, maybe we'll bring it up th um, 30%. You know, 30% more from where it is. So let's kind of do that right here. I just went in, in into object mode. So now we're in object mode, and this is where you want to scale your avatar. So if I scroll up on my side panel here, you'll see scale here. So I we said 30%, I'm at 1 right now, so if I go to 1.3, that should be about 30%. So let's let's do that. So I'm just going to hit scale on this avatar and we can look on the right there and scale our avatar up now I'm pretty much dead on right there that rarely happens but um, when you get close to where uh, you want your size to be what you can do to have the to have a little bit more control and hit exactly what you want is you can hit shift while you're scaling and this will lower the incremental values as you scale. So I'm at 1.3 right there. So I'm going to uh, left click there and save it as that. So now our skeleton has been scaled up 30%. Now we're not done yet. We have to adjust everything to because this scale needs to be at 1. We can't... Um, we're going to have all kinds of problems if we try to upload the avatar when the scale is not at 1. So we have to put this back to 1. Now this is, uh, you know, pretty simple. We can apply scale. Bam. Um, but we're still not done yet. Because when we scaled our avatar, we changed all the bone positions. Okay. So that needs to be saved in our skeleton. So all these new joint positions need to be saved. Now another thing you want to do, I just um, applied scale on the skeleton, 
but we also need to apply scale on the mesh. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to apply scale. And I think my eyes are a different mesh in this one. So I'm going to apply scale here also. Okay, so now I've applied scale to the whole skeleton. We'll, I'll select the skeleton again. I'm going to go into pose mode. Okay. Now, notice we have all kinds. This is all in red because um, I think that's kind of telling us we have joint positions that are not saved. And so how do we save these joint positions here? We need to go into posing and we're going to use this familiar tool that we've been dealing with um, quite a bit lately. I'm going to turn that off. Um, but I don't know if I should do this. <laughs> One thing to know if your joint positions are off is to go to your rest pose. So if I go to rest pose, um, well, it's not showing any difference there. But we're going to do this anyway. We have resized it. We've rescaled everything. And now I want to convert to bind pose. So I'm basically saving joint positions. So let's save that. We don't have to change anything here. OK, so now I've saved my new joint positions. Now all of my joints are um, my skeleton even in object mode is still at one my mesh is still at one and now i can select my mesh and export it out as this new size okay now one problem um that that you will have to deal with if you had have made any kind of animation for this is um, you will have problems with bone translation, okay, if you have rescaled. So let's go back into uh, pose mode, and I want to take a look. We did make some animation for this cat already, and that's why I think this is kind of a great example. So I'm going to go to, um, let's go to my walk. So in this avatar, I'm not using bone translation all that much. But uh, because of the way it's made, I did try to take advantage of the separate spine bones in um, our skeleton, even the ones at the end. Now, because I use that, um, the chest bone now is unparented from the torso bone. And so that I could place it in this configuration, which means the chest bone requires bone, bone translation. And the same goes for tail one, the beginning of the tailbone. Okay, so I've scaled up the avatar, but now that is reflected in the animation. So in order to get all of my animation to work again, Number one, I will have to re-upload any animation, even if it's just using rotation, because the new animation needs to reflect the new bone positions. Now, this doesn't change anything with uh, animations that only use rotation, but you will need to re-upload those animations again. In an animation like this, where I do have bone translation, I will need to go through this animation step by step and correct each one of these bone positions. Oops, I'm not even in... This is actually the first frame here. So I will have to go through the animation step by step, line up this bone, try and line it up perfectly every frame. So now that's the chest bone that I have translation on and the tailbone so I have to try and fix and line each one of these up in every keyframe. So that's the pitfall if you want to change it after you've already done some animation for it. You will have to change anything that you use bone translation on and you will have to re-upload 
any other animations, even if they're just using bone rotation. So uh, <laughs> that's a, a, a conversation about scaling your avatar. And it's not really um, that hard. It's just there are just a, a few little things uh, that you need to think about when you want to do this. And try if you're going to resize, try to do it very early on in your project so you don't have to go through and correct um, some of your animation. So I think um, I think that's the video for today. So um, it's real simple. Tinies, giants, resizing your avatar, all simple and awesome in Avastar. Um, don't forget to check out her video, Gaia's video, the Machina Matrix team's uh, video on tinies. And um, don't forget to check out my website. I have blender themes and things like hand poses and things that you can purchase on my website. So um, have a good one, everyone.